Hi everyone, I'm Francesca Kamani and welcome to Magical Kenya. Fun fact, I actually used to live in Kenya and I've even ridden here at the Ngong race course in the ladies race. So it's excellent to be able to be back here for one of their premier races, the Kenya Guineas. But naturally, what's the best way to start a Kenyan adventure? So when you're in Africa and you've got this kind of landscape here, the best way to get around and the best way to see the animals is on a horse. This is Kyoto here and we're going to go for a ride. Guys, there are some lions over there. Oh my gosh. Did you see that? This is the parade ring at Ngong Racecourse on race day, but what's it like to actually train a racehorse in Kenya? Buffaloes, lions, zebra. Yep, you guessed it. My name is Joseph Moya. This is how it looks like to train horses in Kenya. Hello. My gallop with lands up the cross to gallop to the Kinakuru National Park. And do the zebra come and run along with the horses? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they can run on the other side. Yeah. Even actually rhinos, we see them. Even, yeah. uh, even uh, lions on the other side. Oh gosh, if you hear a lion roaring, it might make the horse run a bit faster. Uh, they are used to now. They're used to. <laughs> Which of the big races you've won? Guineas, derbies? We also have won derby. We get Guinness with the Chiruru, a horse which was actually the country bred Chiruru. And I have been trying to win the derby, but uh, I have not come across. I have been that second. That is all I have done. If you could win one race in the whole world, which would be the best race for you to win? It is uh, the derby in Elton, because that is where the prestigious is. Well, we'll start with the Kenya Derby. <laughs> you, then... start, you start with the Kenya Derby, <laughs> then you go to the Epsom. Yeah. <laughs> How many horses can you guess are in training at the moment in Kenya? It's only about 80. 80, wow. Yes. And back when you started, for example, were there many more? Oh, there were many. There were about 15 trainers. 15 trainers. All the jockeys that I know from England, they were coming here. They have the bloodline of uh, Galileo, all of three of them. This is you trying to be the Kenyan Aidan O'Brien, yes? I am. For the derby, <laughs> win the derby with the grandson of Galileo. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. They're very happy playing. They're like boys at school, right? Yes. Chasing, biting, kicking. Ah, uh, you need you need that. Yeah. I've got to say, Joe, this is a, a very beautiful place to train. It is actually. I would say so. Kenya's answer to Warren Hill, just with the, <laughs> with the zebras, the warthog, the impala, the park in the background. It's amazing. Of course, every racing industry needs a breeding side. Q Venetia Phillips, who along with Michael and Sarah Spencer at Sirai Stud, are breeding from their former champion on the track. We went to find out more about it. Free wheeler going through this field like a knife through butter. It's free wheeler, no doubt about it. Free wheeler, the winner here today of the Kenya Derby 2018. <laughs> So Venetia, for someone who's never heard of Sirai Stud, can you explain in a nutshell what you do here? We started breeding purpose-bred fire horses for Sirai House, and then uh, we got a great horse on the racetrack, and then we decided that for, I suppose, Kenya racing, we wanted to start breeding racehorses. And we're so lucky we're having an amazing season so far and have had quite a lot of success on Ngong over the last few years. In this barn, we've got our, our champion, yeah. Free wheeler. He's been a very exciting horse for everybody here. I suppose we started off thinking we'd just get a fun horse to race and then uh, 
put in some thoroughbred into our bloodlines here that sort of made us all want to go into racing a little bit more in this country. He won what? He, he won 12 races, but he won the Derby, the Ledger, uh, he won the Delamere Gold Vars, the Uhuru Cup. He never, he never was beaten. And, and what does he do now? He obviously covers mares. But anybody that you know wants to breed something quite nice for eventing in this country also, he's a special guy because you can ride him, you know, do a lot with him. on safari? Yeah, he can do. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Can we go and have a look at some of your babies, please? You got your babies over there. So these are the first babies that um, obviously came from, from Free Wheeler. Sounds very friendly. Very friendly. <laughs> you, is it a little cold? Do you know what I'm saying? He's a little cold. He's a little cold. If they, you train them and they fail well, as a racehorse, will they come back here as a safari? They will come back here, or you know, if they don't run well, then they'll be remarketed into eventing. They're a very versatile breed, the thoroughbred, I think. They're usually pretty brave and athletic and amaz amazing horse, I think. Amazing breed, the thoroughbred. We caught up with some key figures from the Kenyan racing scene to learn more about what the past has been like and what their hopes are for the future. Ngong Racecourse is modelled on Ascot. It was deemed prudent to get the experts in so that our racecourse was really top international quality. Our racing in Kenya has been here for a while, almost 100 years plus. It's been good, we've had our ups and downs, but we're still trying to pick it up, it's picking up again. Our sort of short to medium term plan is to double the number of horses in Kenya and, you know, just get events that bring in the crowds and they can really enjoy the sport and get involved. We want it to be a cool place to be, you know, what should we do this weekend as a family? Come racing. The amount of different sporting people that come here and, and realize that, you know, the potential. It, it's a hub of activity these days. So I, I think it has fantastic potential. The prize money is coming good. We're getting new um, breeds from South Africa and around the country. Our own Kenyan uh, breeding industry is picking up again. So we, the future is looking bright for us. So we've heard all about Free Wheeler's budding stud career, but our travels around Kenya also took us to meet a man who's been one of the long-standing bastions of the industry. Where and how did it start? We had up to, I think, 13 race courses in Kenya. No way. At one 13. stage. Some of them sort of um, national hunt type stuff. So we even had our own Grand National. Wow. What we've got is space and we've got a climate that they can live out 24 hours a day. We're farming horses to a certain extent. We're not treating things as individuals. We feed them in communal pens like this, and if they want any food, they've got to shove and push and say, that's mine, and you've seen some of them are absolute thugs. The first big race around the bend is the guineas and I've watched horses who fed on their own in Nairobi in their stable who should be winning the race, losing their concentration because they're being shoved like this for space. It was mine have done this all their lives, get out of the way, and they win races That's they should so never have taken. And in the last 186 three-year-old classics, which is your Derby Oaks, Two Guineas and St. Ledger, we've won 36% of those from these things. So just to explain this, we've got the, the mothers here, the foals right. here, so they're, they're all I still on their mothers. The, yes, they're all living with mothers. And then as soon as the foals will come away, I want them to learn to be thugs. Okay. Okay, I want to have that aggressive spirit in them. And you can tell who the aggressive ones are. And, and very often the aggressive ones are your better I was going to say, have you done a study? Have you monitored them not, in the field not, and thought, right, yeah, that's, not, that's the racehorse? And not a scientific one, but in my mind, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, look, they're coming to find their baby. Where's your baby? Where's your baby? But ultimately, all roads lead to the Kenya Guineas. Follow me around as I explore one of their biggest race days. So 
I'm joined here by Chico and Joyce, who are two local Kenyan models. They've come to enjoy the day at the races. I started coming to the races late last year, and I've seen the crowd build up. I've seen the fashion really improve, and it's always a nice time. I enjoy it. How about this, guys? I've been given the keys to the vault. Let's go and have a look. Oh, wow. Look at this. So the Guineas is obviously a big deal out here, but the Derby is the one. It's really heavy. So before I came out to Kenya, I was told that it's not all that easy for the jockeys and the guys to get the equipment that they need. So I asked Adam Kirby, who lives near me at home, if he could do a bit of a whip around amongst the jockeys back in England. And look at this. I have got quite the haul including a lot of goggles, all signed as well. So let's go and see how well they go down. Hey guys, do you know what? I asked some of the jockeys in England if they would donate some goggles for you guys, because I know they're not so easy to get hold of around here. So look, we've got a lot of goggles. Who would like some goggles? We've got them all signed as well. Do you know Holly Doyle? Yeah. Yeah, they're hers. These are signed. You know Holly? She's shining right now. Nicola Curry. Luke Morris won the ARC last year yes. on Alpinista. Do you want Luke Morris's? Yes. There we go. PJ McDonald, Jamie Spencer. Who are Jamie Spencer? Spencer Jamie Spencer. They're, they're quite popular. I don't know who donated these, but they might be popular. Do <laughs> you want them? Okay, great. And we have some britches. They're like more all weathery ones. Uh, more britches, britches. We have a silk hat, a hat silk. And another top. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you're welcome, you're welcome. No worries, no worries. Good luck today. The horses are parading for the guineas. Six runners, obviously 1,600 metres or a mile. The ones we want to look at, particularly are number two, which is Cranley, that we saw at Joe Muya's yard. And his son Henry is riding Cranley. So Moritz is uh, the Sirai stud runner, the Spencer's runner. And he really does stand out. He's got such a gleam on his coat. He's a really proud looking uh, individual. He's undefeated so far. So obviously there's a lot of expectation around him. And we're off in the guineas. No big screens here, so you've got to rely on eyesight. So Morris has settled in second last, which is probably a good position. She wanted to take him back, and they hope there's enough pace for him. But it is Ripon taking them on at a really sensible, good pace there. So we've gone past Cemetery Bend, and we've got Ripon leading in front there. So Morris is about in second last, but that's exactly where we want him. Not long before they turn into the straight. He just points him in the right direction. He's going to keep his unbeaten record. The winner, horse number five, St. Moritz. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you so much. We're just so lucky to have him on. We're amazing. What were you feeling watching the race? Oh, I've been nervous since yesterday. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just great. Gong for the Kenya Guineas. We've had everything. We've had great fashion. We've had the amazing acrobats. We've had a bigger crowd than they've had here in years. And to top it all off, St. Moritz won the Guineas at full Sirai stud. It has been spectacular. And I can't wait to come back. Yeah.